Stories does not save. No. Yeah. And I had somebody in the Bible here, the one, the man we're going to talk about, who was sick and tired of God's stories. He wanted to feel and experience God. And that is Gideon. Yes. That is Gideon. And let me tell you, before I can get to this, the reason why there arose a generation who knew not God, somewhere along the line, those who should have passed on the button failed on their responsibility. Come on. Very true. Yeah. There was a disconnect mm. somewhere. Yeah. And I want to pray today that anybody under the sound of my voice yeah. is going to remain committed to the call. Yeah. Before you go to the grave, you will pass it on. Yeah. And Jesus was very keen into yeah. doing this. Yeah. Jesus came to impart it into us. Yeah. He came to show us how to do it. Yeah. Amen. Bless the Lord. So that you may continue doing it until he comes. Hallelujah. What a privilege. Amen. Being the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Being the hands of the Lord. Amen. Being the feet of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We cannot afford to fail our generation. No, 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 no. I'm telling you. And because a generation was not somewhere and the button was not passed on. You know, God created human beings with a desire for God. Such that if they don't have something to worship, they will create something for themselves. Because man was naturally created religious. Yes. yes. <laughs> Somebody didn't hear me. Yes. <laughs> human beings were naturally created religious. Yes. There is always a vacuum in a man that can never be filled by anything. It needs a deity. Something that is more higher. And because of this, coming to chapter number six. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse number two, the Bible says, I will read on. And the heart of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the beds which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. This is not what God promised for them in the land of Canaan. They were not going in the land of Canaan to live in beds and caves. They were going to live in mansionettes. They were going to be refreshed, to forget about all of their sufferings in Egypt. Yes. Woo. There we have people in the church who are living in beds. And in caves. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. It doesn't matter how smart you look in a suit. In our language, I mean in our community, we have a, a, a saying that goes that clothing only covers nakedness. Some of us who have terrible scars in your body such that if only you could be flipped naked. Run away. I'm telling you, yeah. I'm telling you, so many scars. Some of us have wounds that are still bleeding, but what covers us? There is one that covers more than what we put on, and that is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ. When he covers you, everything of your own is over. When someone looks at you, they don't see you, they see Jesus. Amen. They see the glory. Amen. They see the power of God. Yeah. They have a reason to give God the glory. Amen. Because it is no longer him. Where are you today? Are you living in a cave? Are you living in a dead? Because you cannot experience the power of God. There was a disconnect somewhere. And the Bible was three. And so it was when Israel had sworn that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, and even they came up against them and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. They were no longer enjoying the increase of the earth. Whatever the earth was yielding for their good was being taken away and being enjoyed by some other people. God forbid. Glory to God. God forbid. Watch closely, because by the end of this, there is gonna be transitioning in the spirit world. Amen. There is gonna be a transitioning. If given an opportunity here, you could tell us testimonies of the losses you've gone through. But listen to me, we serve a God of restoration. Right. A God that when you come back to your senses, and realize where you have gone wrong and call on his holy name. For the Bible says, and whosoever calleth unto the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. For there is no end, there is no salvation except in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. I left verse 
number one, chapter six for a reason. Because there the Bible says, and the children of Israel cried to the Lord. And you can never cry before you come into your senses. Before you realize that something is wrong. <laughs> no cry. You will take it to be normal. You will take it to be normal. And I know, coming from Africa, I refused. I'm not a normal person. I'm, I'm not a normal person. And neither to you. Can I tell you how? God has blessed us big deal. Amen? Amen. Amen. God has blessed us big deal. Amen. Wound and honor. Part flesh and partly spirit. Yes. Do you know God cannot operate on the earth as per his word today without you? No. He needs you, not as a servant, but as a co-laborer. Amen. What an honor! Amen. And that is what makes you unique. Amen? Amen. That is what makes you unique. Amen. What is it that is taking away from you? You've got to get to a point of realizing where did I go wrong? Because the Bible says God visits the sins of our forefathers, even to the fourth generation. Some of us are being affected by such, but unless you realize that when I got into Jesus, even the curses, the sins of my forefathers were dealt with on the cross. Because I no longer belong to that lineage. I am in a different lineage. Amen? I read the book of Matthew and I am blessed. There is something in a lineage. Who is your father? You know, we get our identity from the Father. Amen? Amen. And when Jesus was to be born, his lineage was to be made clear yes. of who he was. Amen. And it had everything to do with all good things that God had done in preparation to make him, making him a Messiah. Amen? Amen? Amen. In verse 5, the Bible said that they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number. Problems that you cannot count, one after the other. Today it is headache. Tomorrow it is my leg. The following day it is my son. Let me tell you, God wants to give us rest. He's a God of rest. He's a God of peace. He says, Behold, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. The peace that Paul speaks about that transcends the human understanding. Praise God. You know, naturally, there are some situations that when you go through, it's hard. To I mean, to have that peace. But God gives you some peace. People look at you and they're like, brother, how are you making it? According to them, you should be dead. According to them, you should be crying. According to them, you should be, I mean, crying for mercy. But there they see you strong. That is the peace of God that transcends all the understanding of human beings. And the same peace that speak into your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of time, I want us to jump to verses number 25, the same chapter. I want to show us something there. Now, as we read, start from verse 25, the Bible speaks about Gideon when everybody else is hiding in caves and in dens. And tell me, I mean, Gideon is having a desire in him. He's like, no, I cannot continue hiding. Yes, I know it is dangerous, but I have a desire in me. I feel something is missing. Yes. I cannot continue sitting with the people in the hiding. Then Gideon gets out, and the Bible says that he was threshing wheat, exposing his life to danger. <clears throat> Perhaps the enemies would spot him from far and say, there they are. Let us go. Amen. But there Gideon is. And God looks at these people and sees the boldness, the sacrifice. I mean, how Gideon is sacrificed because the Bible says he was threshing wheat for his family.
family. He exposed his life for his family. God is looking for some people who are going to risk their lives. To say that we are no longer going to continue this kind of life, no matter what it takes, a generation must be preserved. Food is one means of preserving a generation. This is why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, yes. but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes. No matter what it takes, we must risk to share our life with those who need it. It is the food of the Spirit. And there the angel appears to him. And now, from verse 25, we see something the Bible says. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's same bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father has. Praise God. Throw what? Down. The altar of Baal. Mm. Of who? The John's father. Now look, <laughs> are you now seeing the problem? Gideon was not, was not raised in a godly family. His father introduced him into the worship of strange gods. The gods that made them to live in slavery and in bondage. <coughs> and listen to me, there's one thing I learned, that whenever there is a disconnect, in generations, there is always need for God to reappear. Whenever God reappears, he reappears to reinstitute. <coughs> Hello? Yes. You get me? Yes. He reappears to reinstitute because there were no fathers to pass on the right way. Now, God comes and introduces himself to Gideon because nobody introduced Gideon to God. And God tells Gideon, Mighty man of Vela. I was like, what are you talking about? I am not. As a matter of fact, I am the least in my family. Not only me, by the way, even my clan is the weakest. What are you talking about? And the angel says, don't mind. God is with you. And that tree really aggravated him. God? What are you talking about God? We've only had this in stories. Our forefathers told us. But if this God be with us, how come such a things, things have befallen us? Yes. There are certain things that are happening with us, in us, that should not really be happening. Because there is absence of God's presence with us. Glory to God. Absence of God's presence with us. What we have in the name of God's presence is just but a form. But we need the real presence of God. The presence of God that when it moves, it never leaves people the same. It never leaves a situation the same. When it moves into my life, it changes my life. It gives me a language to communicate. Listen to me, people of God. That is the God we are serving. And God told him, Gideon, what I want you to do? Destroy. Bring down the altar of your father. What is the altar standing? The Bible says our God is a jealous God. And he shares his glory with no one. Amen. These are the things that is, I mean, restricting us from experiencing God's power and presence. Unless we are willing to bring them down. Unless we are willing to be associate ourselves, to disconnect with them and connect with God the Father. Amen. Amen? And so, people of God, I want to finish by saying this, that when Gideon obeyed and did exactly what God told him, when you read the following chapters, you can tell what a great conquest, what a great victory. And he led the entire Israelites into victory. Yes. Thank you. There was nobody remaining in the cave because one man sacrificed his life. When the entire community came up to want to stone him to death, let me tell you, when you stand out for God, be ready for opposition. Yes. Be ready that people will come out for your blood. Amen. But listen, don't worry. 
there is a blood that has already been shed. Yeah. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. No more any other blood to be shed. And God will never let it until the reason and the Amen. purpose and why he called you Amen. is accomplished. Amen. It is your time to get delivered. Amen. It is your time to walk out of slavery. It is your time to enjoy. Yeah. But listen, what is the key? Amen. Bring down the altars. Amen. Bring down the altars. Don't be afraid of what people would say. When you identify with God, God will identify with you. When you stand for God, God will stand for you. I challenge you, stand for God. God will stand for you. Praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. I did not hear you. Can we give God some praise? Hallelujah. I did not hear you. I did not hear you. Can we give God some praise? Hallelujah. Is somebody in the house? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm happy to be here. Again, thank you, Brother Malo, for the invitation. I was here five years ago. And I appreciate what the Lord is doing in the United States of America. Yeah. Because something good and something Thank special you. is happening in the United States yes. of America. Amen. Amen. Somebody never, uh, somebody never heard what I say. Something good, something good, is happening Amen. in Amen. the United States Amen. of America. Amen. Amen. Somebody Amen. never heard me. I said something good Amen. is happening Amen. in the United Amen. States of America. Somebody never had me. I'm saying it again. Well, let me say it like this. Something good is happening in Florida. When you see us here, and I thank Brother Rotivi what he said last night. When you see us here, understand that God is doing and let me explain. People came to Africa, and I thought my brother was just here a while ago, and some from Kenya. Some people came to Africa many years ago. They brought Catholicism and tried to change us to become Catholics. They brought, uh, they became, uh, they, they came with um, Anglican movement, Episcopalian, they wanted us to be Episcopalians. Yes. Uh, they brought Baptist movement, they wanted us to become Baptist people. They brought Method Methodist, they wanted us to be Methodist people. Yes. But they forgot one thing, and this is what they forgot, that we were not supposed to be the Catholics or Methodists. But we were supposed to be the sons of God. And uh, this man here I've been quoting, and is like, what's going on? The Bible says he came to his very own, his very own received him not, but as many as received him, he gave them the right to become the sons of God. They forgot to make us sons of God. But I thank God because of this time, I thank God because of his spirit, something is happening whereby most people now are being made sons of God, and that's what is happening right now, and sons are doing something. I am tired to be a child of God. I'm not a child, I am a son. Because the Bible says as many as are led by the spirit of God, they Amen. And that's why I'm glad to be here after many years. 
because I understand what God is doing. There is a revival that is coming to the United States. There is a revival that is shaking this nation. When you begin to see certain things happening, when you begin to see uh, uh, activists advancing things that are contradicting the word of God, begin to understand that a revival is coming to the land. And this country has been of great benefit to Africa and every third world country, no doubt about that. I don't want to say it, I want to tell you, God is going to not destroy this country because the, there are people in this country, even though it's going south, but there are people in this country who are on their knees. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, somebody help me here.
living for 900 years, never living for 900 years. When he was 65, he began Methuselah. And his son became the longest man to have ever lived on the face of the earth. Yes. For 969, did Methuselah live? But the father never lived for, three, for over 365 years. <coughs> because the Bible says, when he began Methuselah, when he was 65, for the rest of the years, he began to walk with God. And he walked with God. And he was not. At a time, nobody was walking with God. At a time when people were living for many years, he decided to walk with God. He decided it was time to know God on a personal level. He did not care about anybody else. He did not care about the neighbor. He did not care about the friends. It was about himself and relationship with God. And he began to walk with God, and he walked with God for 300 years. And God looked at him, and he said, no, no, I can't have you there. You have to be where I am for 300 For 300 years, he walked with God. Some of us cannot, are not able to walk with God for even now. Ten minutes. But he walked with God for 300 years. He believed in God. He was a man of faith. And when he walked with God, God translated him. Because before that, he had a testimony that he preached. He never preached the neighbor. He never preached the king. He never preached the country. But he preached God. Seek him. Yeah. But they don't seek him diligently. Yeah. 
Because then he says before that, with our faith, it is impossible. With our faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus said one time, if you just speak to this mountain, tell this mountain, be thou removed and be cast in the sea, and thou not. But believe, we don't receive today, not because we don't have Jesus in our lives. It is because we don't believe, and if we believe, the doubts in us again.